Merry Christmas and welcome to the Christmas experience hosted by Trinity Assembly of God. Now enjoy your journey to Bethlehem. My name is Mary. You may know me as the mother of Jesus, but at the beginning of my story, I was just an unknown teenage girl living a very normal life. Then, on a day that began like any other, everything changed. I remember it like it was yesterday. Suddenly, I saw a bright light, and as I shielded my eyes, an angel named Gabriel appeared and said, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. He will reign over his people, and his kingdom will never end. How can this be, since I'm not married and have never been with a man? Gabriel said that the Holy Spirit would come upon me and that the child born to me would be called the Son of God. I was overwhelmed by God's presence, and although I didn't understand how it would happen, I wanted to be obedient. So I knelt and said, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Then, as suddenly as he appeared, the angel was gone. That's how my journey to Bethlehem began. So, now that I've told you about the moment that turned my world upside down, let me back up and fill you in on my life before my angelic visit. Believe me, the last thing I was thinking about was having a baby. The only thing on my mind was getting married. That's right. I had recently been engaged to a man named Joseph. Our fathers arranged the marriage, which was the custom of my people. Joseph owned a carpenter shop in Nazareth. He was a kind man with a good reputation. He was also tall, strong, and quite handsome. Out of all the girls in the village, I couldn't believe he agreed to marry me. It was such a happy time for Joseph and me and our families until I told him about the baby. I'll never forget the look on my parents' faces when I told them the news. They were shocked, to say the least. Papa got mad, mother cried, and Joseph, my dear Joseph, my eyes still fill with tears when I remember the anguish on his face. I told them everything the angel said, But no one believed me. Joseph felt betrayed, and he broke off our engagement. I brought shame to my family. Friends I had known since childhood stopped speaking to me. And everywhere I went, people stared and whispered terrible things about me. I never dreamed that saying yes to God's plan would cause so much pain. But I learned during those dark days of doubt and confusion that God is still working, even when things don't make sense. After some time, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and assured him that I was telling the truth. We talked and worked things out. Eventually, my parents came around too. And as the months passed, we started getting excited. How could we not? There was a baby coming. For centuries, my people were told of a promised Messiah, a great ruler who would come and deliver us from the grip of the Romans. Everyone, including me, expected the Messiah to be a military hero, a warrior king who would rule our nation with power. And every day, for nine long months, I tried to imagine why, why, of all the women in the world, God would choose me to be the mother of his son, King Jesus. Scene 2, Joseph and Mary's Journey As the time of my delivery came near, we received difficult news that once again complicated our plans. 
the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus. He decided to conduct a census that required every family in Israel to travel to their ancestral home to be counted for tax purposes. For Joseph and me, that meant a journey to Bethlehem, a grueling 90-mile trip through difficult desert terrain known for wild animals and robbers. Oh, and did I mention I was nine months pregnant? Longest journey of my life. My feet were swollen, my pack was aching, the baby was kicking, and I was miserable. Joseph was so patient and did everything he could to try to help me. Finally, after three days, we arrived outside the gate of Bethlehem. There, we stopped to eat and rest. Scene 3, The City Gates at the city gates, we were greeted by Roman soldiers. Or should I say, herded by Roman soldiers. They pushed and prodded us through the gate and down the streets like livestock. Just another reminder that our cities no longer belong to us. Not even this city, the home of the great King David. During the time of David's reign and his son Solomon, my people experienced our greatest success. But that was long ago. Our kings turned their backs on God, and the Babylonians came. They destroyed Jerusalem, made slaves of our best and brightest people, and killed or scattered the rest. One empire gave way to the next, and Israel was never the same. In my time, it was the Romans that ruled over us. Many families fell into poverty, suffering starvation, disease, beatings, and even murder. And yet, amidst all the despair, there was still a sense of expectancy that one day, maybe soon, the Messiah would appear to deliver his people. As Joseph and I entered the gates of the city, I couldn't help thinking to myself, if these people only knew their Messiah is almost here. Scene 4, The Marketplace Bethlehem was bustling with activity. The streets were full of merchants selling their wares, children and animals running around, and a mix of local residents and weary travelers like us. But what I wanted more than anything else was a private place to lay down and rest. I was so tired and uncomfortable. And now, seeing the crowds of people, we started getting concerned that we might have trouble finding lodging. Joseph asked a few people where we could find the village inn. They directed us down the street and someone said, Good luck, I hear there's not a room left in town. Well, about that time, I had my first labor pain. I had a feeling this would be a night to remember. Scene 5, Caesar Augustus. Joseph and I were so frustrated with Caesar Augustus for making us take that long journey to Bethlehem. A rich Roman ruler forcing everyone to return to their hometowns just so he could take more of our money. 
But God used Caesar's decree to fulfill Micah's prophecy. Bethlehem, you are one of the smallest towns in the nation of Judah. But the Lord will choose one of your people to rule the nation. There's no way we would have been in Bethlehem for the birth of Jesus if that decree hadn't forced us to make the journey. Caesar was acting all high and mighty, ordering everyone around. Little did he know, he was nothing more than a pawn in God's great plan. It was another reminder that God's plans never fail. Scene 6, The Inn I knew we were in trouble when I saw a lot of people in front of the inn. Joseph looked back at me, and he shook his head. I just smiled and said, Everything will be okay, Joseph. God will take care of us. We didn't wait in line long before the innkeeper stepped out and said, I'm sorry, everyone, but all our rooms are full. As the unhappy people left, Joseph literally begged the innkeeper for lodging, knowing that our baby could come at any time. I could tell he wanted to help us, but all he could say was, I simply have no room, not even in my own house. As we turned to leave, the innkeeper called out, Wait, I know a friend who might have something that could work. And he gave Joseph directions. My labor pains were increasing. Jesus was coming. We needed some place, any place, and soon. Scene 7, The Shepherds and Angels Joseph and I found out later that just after Jesus was born, an angel of the Lord appeared to a group of shepherds who were watching their sheep on a hill outside of Bethlehem. They told us the angel nearly scared them to death, and then announced, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly the night sky was filled with bright light as the armies of heaven appeared with the angel. They were praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill to men. After hearing this news, the shepherds left immediately to find the special baby the angel had described to them. Scene 8, The Nativity The innkeeper's tip paid off. His friend answered the door, took one look at me, and said, It's not much, but you're welcome to stay in my stable. The owner lent us a lamp and pit us a good night. Joseph spread out a garment and helped me lie down. And as the lamplight flickered on the walls, my labor pains quickly increased. I so wanted my mother to be with me, but we were alone, just Joseph and me. I'm not sure how long I was in labor. Joseph stayed by my side every moment, encouraging me, gently stroking my forehead, whispering my name, and delivering our baby. When Jesus was born, we cried tears of joy and relief. As I held my baby for the first time and looked into his sweet face, I wondered, what does the future hold for my precious son? Then I wrapped him in soft cloth, and I laid him carefully on hay Joseph had placed in a manger. My journey to Bethlehem began with a visit from an angel that led me to the manger and ended at the cross, where I watched my precious son give his life for you and me. That first Christmas, God sent you a present, the gift of forgiveness. It comes wrapped in peace and the promise that heaven will be your forever home when this life is over. You receive this gift by saying a simple prayer. I invite you to say that prayer with me now. Are you ready? Just pray. Jesus, thank you for making the journey from heaven to earth. Thank you for showing me how much God loves me. 
please forgive me of my sins and come into my life. Help me get to know you and put your peace in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for A Journey to Bethlehem. If you prayed and asked Jesus into your life, congratulations on the most important decision that you will ever make. We'd love to celebrate with you. Please call 304-363-8237 or send us a private message on our Trinity Facebook page to let us know. Thank you for being our guest and Merry Christmas.